which as I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always, thou and thou only first in my heart. I, King of heaven, my treasure, Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me again today for our Bible study discussion. My name is Chaplain Elisa. I will be leading our time together. Today we are looking at Psalm 139. As always, be ready to pause the video with a remote control or touching the screen. Uh, I really want this to be interactive so you have time to chat with someone or even just on your own think and write some things down as we go through the passage a little at a time. So be ready to pause. Let's begin with a short prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together and for your word. We ask your Holy Spirit to be our teacher today that we would learn from you and from each other. We pray in your holy name. Amen. I will read this passage aloud for us to start. Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. Amen. What a beautiful passage. So I want to start with verses 2 through 5 and look at the words that describe how well God knows us, how well God knows you. So look at verses 2, 3, 4, and 5. 
First it says, you God know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. Verse three, you know when I lie down and you know all my ways. Verse four, you know all my words before I speak them. And verse five, God is behind me and God is before me, all around. God is around you on all sides. That's a lot of knowing. God knows us really well. It sounds like inside and out, up and down, all around, every direction, every time. So I'm curious, who else knows you that well? You can generate some ideas for who knows you? Who would you say knows you really, really well? Yeah, sure. Friends, spouses, caregivers, sometimes pets know us really well. But does anyone know you as well as God knows you? No, no one else knows you that well, that deeply, that intimately. Now, the writer of this psalm, David, how does he feel when he realizes that God knows him that well? This is verse 6. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. It's like his mind can't even get around how incredible it is that God knows him that well. Now, let's look at verses 7 through 12. Where? is God in relation to us, in, in relation to you? Where is God? All right, let's look at that. He's, David starts out asking that very question. Where shall I go from your spirit? Verse 8, if I ascend to heaven, God is there. If I go to Sheol, the, the underworld, God is there. Verse 9, if I'm in the uttermost farthest sea, God is there. Verses 11 through 12. In the darkness, God is there. Now, David says, okay, so God is everywhere. What is God doing in all of those places? Let's look carefully at verse 10. Even there, your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. So David is at pains to say, God is everywhere and he's holding me. He's leading me. God is with you. God is leading you. You are never alone, no matter where you are. It's a great comfort. Then verses 13 through 17. We're going to look at when God started to know you. How long has God known you? This, this depth of knowledge inside, outside, all around, every place, heaven, underworld, farthest sea, darkness, light, this all-encompassing sense of God's knowledge of you, of us. When did that start? In verse 13, for you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. So at the moment of conception and onward, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. God was there from the very, very beginning of life itself. God was there with you in your mother's womb. That's an amazing sense, isn't it? In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. So if you think of your life like a book, your life here on earth like a book, God knew, knew every page of that book, even before you did. So how about today? How does God feel about you today? Let's look at verses 17 and 18. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! 
How vast is the sum of them? If I would count them, they are more than the sand. You are precious to God. God has more thoughts about you than you can count. I want you to picture a beach and the grains of sand on a beach. That is the image that the writer uses to describe the number of thoughts that God has about you each and every day as his precious child. <laughs> That's such a great image. Like we can't even imagine that we could have, that we could be taking up those, that many thoughts in God's mind and heart. That's how much he loves you, how much he loves us. And it says, as the psalmist ends in verse 18, I am awake and I am still with you. So when is God thinking about you? All the time. All the time. When you wake up each day, God is thinking about you even before you wake up, even while you were asleep. God is thinking about you and how much he loves you. <laughs> such a great image. I wonder what your thoughts are, the first the first thoughts you have when you wake up each day. <laughs> It'd be funny to pause and think about, okay, what are my first thoughts when I wake up each day? Hmm, I generally think that I want my coffee and I'm a little stiff and sore, so I better do my yoga and get a walk today. I'm not sure my very, very first thoughts are about how much I'm loved by God. But those should be our first thoughts, how loved we are by God, because God is thinking that the minute we wake up. Mm, how beautiful. So as a whole, pause and think for a moment. And if you have this psalm written out, look at it again. What is this psalm really about? How would you describe um, David's, the writer's goal in writing this psalm? I would say three things this psalm is really about. God's love that is all the time, all-encompassing and personal. God's presence with us, which is everywhere, all the time, and God's actions in his love towards us, that he leads us, he holds us, he forms us. And what should our response be to these truths? Let's go back to verse 14. Our response is right there in the middle of the psalm. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. I will praise you. That's a great place to end this study today, asking this question. How are you able or would you like to praise God today? In what ways? Can you praise God for all these truths of his love, his presence, his active work in our lives? Pause and generate some ideas here. I hope you find encouragement in praising God because you are fearfully, wonderfully, beautifully made and loved by God. Rejoice in that today. Let's close in a short prayer. Heavenly Father, we do praise you for your presence with us and your overwhelming, never-ending love for us. May we rest in that love today. Go forth and share that love with others as well. Thank you, God. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me for this meditation on Psalm 139. Take it with you. Read it again as often as you like. And I'll see you again soon for another Bible study discussion. Go in peace. Bye-bye.